Hey everybody, welcome to Cousin Jack Cars. I want to thank everyone for hitting that like button. You know, it's kind of amazing. The last tutorial I did with the Angel, people hit that like button. And what happens with YouTube, it, it tells YouTube, yeah, you like it. But it also tells YouTube, maybe other folks just like you might like it also. And so thanks for hitting that like button. One of the things I did recently on the YouTube channel was I, I polled the audience. I said, what do you want for the next tutorial? And the outstanding and overcoming winner was a hillbilly. More than 50% of the votes went to a hillbilly. And so today we are going to carve an itty billy. That's right, an itty bitty hillbilly, also known as itty billy. Um, we're going to have some fun with this and practice knife skills at the same time. We're going to work on creating visual interest by having a combination of flat surface areas and then juxtaposed against, you know, the texture of these beards and mustaches. And it's all knife. No V-tools, no U-gouge, knife alone. All right, let's get started. So here's a little bit of a closer look uh, about what I was talking about with the differences between textures and how we have this broad, flat area here on the hat, on the sides, and then on the back of this little itty-bitty. And then also the different textures with the hair. And you can see this beard. And, and how that's juxtaposed against this flat surface here. It creates some visual interest. And there's two different textures of hair that we'll use. You'll see this texture here on the back of his uh, head and how that hair is different than the way we have this texture running through this beard. We'll do all of that with one knife. And yeah, it would be easy to grab a V-tool and just start putting in all this hair. This is a way to build your knife skills, practice your knife skills, and, and feel confident with uh, with being able to control your blade. That's important as you progress. So let's start by marking out our little block of wood today. And you can see I've already carved one of these little guys right here, this itty billy. And then so with this block of wood, it's one inch square and two and a quarter inches long. Now in millimeters, that would be 25 millimeters square by 57 mils in length. All right? So the first thing I want you to do is just get your center lines on all four sides of your block. As you can see, I've already got that here. And once you've got your center lines drawn on there, we're going to draw in the shoes. Now, for this guy, uh, we're going to make a little quarter inch square on each side here on the front for the shoes. That would be six millimeters, by the way, square. And then after you've done that, the next thing you do is you go from the front of that shoe and just draw an angled line back towards the center line here. And you do that on both sides. That's going to give us the angle on our shoes. Next, we're going to mark the center of the nose. And to do that, you'll come from the bottom of your block of wood up to the one inch mark. That's going to be the center of our nose there. That's 25 millimeters from the bottom up. And then all we're going to do is draw a square around that center mark to create that nose. And that square is about a quarter inch square, six millimeter square. Next thing we'll do is we'll mark the front of this hat brim. And to do that, we'll come from the bottom of the block up to the one inch mark. Just make a uh, mark on each side. And again, that one inch has 25 mils. And then we're just gonna draw that slope from the top of the nose. We'll bring that down on both sides, just like that. And that'll give us the front of that hat brim and it'll give us that nice slope that we're going to see. Next step is to mark the back of the hat. So where this would land on the back of your piece. And this is going to be from the bottom of your block of wood 
you go up and that's going to be three quarters of an inch 18 mils and make your mark on both sides and then draw that line for the back of the hat brim once you've done that the next step is to go from that front where we had drawn the front of the hat brim and just slope a line to connect to the back and you'll want to do that of course on both sides so now you've got your hat and the brim clearly marked all the way around next thing we want to do is sort of mark out where the hat oh, I'm sorry the beard and the hair meet on this uh, little guy and show you what I'm talking about here on the side we see the beard and then there's the hair okay and where that occurs is right here so there's our center line on the side so we're going to go up five-eighths of an inch from the bottom and make a mark that'll be 15 mils make that mark on the center line and then from there we're going to mark where that would come down over here on the shoe so all you're going to do is from the front of your block you'll be going in about an eighth of an inch that's three millimeters and make a mark and now you would just connect those marks draw that slope of the beard just like that and again you'll do that on both sides of your block of course right now we'll mark where the back of the hair would be and so for that we come to the back side of our block and from the bottom we'll go up three-eighths of an inch and that would be 10 mils and we'll just make a mark draw yourself a line for the back of the hair and once we've done that the next thing we would do is go to that mark where that beard and hair connect and just draw again that slope of the hair coming back to the back of the head just like that on both sides next thing we will do is mark out the top of the hat now on this little itty billy the hat slopes backwards and forward all right and we're going to be removing material from both sides what you'll notice is it's not really rounded so much it's a flat surface so on the top of the hat we'll draw these two lines that are about three-eighths of an inch wide or 10 millimeters across here and so from the center It'd be five millimeters each way and then you draw your lines and that is just about all the pencil work we need we'll put this mouth in later we've got some carving to do so let me grab my gloves and we'll get started so for this project we're going to be using or I will be using this Stanley 199 utility knife uh, I'm using a Lennox gold blade I'm using that because it's easily adjustable in this particular utility knife as far as the length of the blade and you've heard me talk about this before um, what I use to wrap my knives and I get a lot of questions from folks about what I use <laughs> for the wrap and this stuff is great um, you'll see a bar right at the top of the video here if you click on that you'll go to a video it's my wrap video did you know I was a wrapper yeah, it's, uh, it's going to show you how I wrap my knives, what I use, and how to apply it. It's, uh, it's pretty easy. You can watch that and just come right back. So what we'll do to get started here is sort of rough out this hat area. So I'm just going to come here under the brim, give myself a little stop cut there, and to the back side of the brim, same thing. and then we'll connect those taking off a little bit of this corner in the way here do the same thing here on the back take out a notch on that corner and then make a stop cut right across the back of the hat 
and again carve up to it. Over on this side, come under that corner and we'll take out a little notch. And give ourselves a stop cut for that half brim as it slopes from the back to the front and the front to the back. Okay. We can also do the front while we're here. And put that tip of the knife right at the center of that nose and draw that stop cut across. Rock my knife at the corner. I'll go upside down here and do the same thing. While I'm at it, I'm going to stop cut around that nose just to make sure we don't go and cut off that nose by mistake. There we go. All right, so I've got that stop cut there. I'm not going to remove anything from under the brim on the front yet. What we're going to do is we're going to go back up to our top and we drew those lines. We're going to be bringing this material towards the center, right? So we'll get busy. Um, the easy way to start, I guess, is just to start removing these corners. And start bringing that back. Okay, we're getting close here on the front. Go on to the back and we'll do the same thing. Okay, we're pretty close on the back there. Just gonna finish getting these corners off and take away the bandsaw marks near the bottom of that hat. Same thing on the front. And we've got some bandsaw marks to remove here on the sides as well. And we'll finish shaping this hat later. We don't want to get too far along with the hat brim itself because that's going to be a weak point on this particular carving. So we're going to save that for later. But we do want to get that shaped. Okay. Next thing we'll do is sort of notch in these feet. So to do that, I'll just come up here on the corner. Get myself a little cut. And then slice down to it. Over here on the side, I'm going to take my knife and kind of follow that line. And again, I'm going to slice right along the side of that stop cut. Then come on to this front part here, make a stop cut, and another. Now I'll just take out a small sliver of wood. What we're going to wind up with in the end, folks, you see this beard comes down between the feet. So we don't want to just cut a big notch out of the front for our feet. We want to be a little bit more picky about how we get these things shaped. All right, so let's do both of these.
little notch right here. Basically a little V-cut just to help shape that foot. Or I guess I will call it a shoe, right? He's not barefoot. Okay. All right, so we've got those pretty well notched in there. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to cut in this part of the side where the beard and the hair are meeting, okay? And you know, you may have to redraw your line every once in a while. You know, keep that pencil handy. Comes in as uh, one of the most important tools that we have, isn't it? So just to give you an example here, just to redraw that line for reference, okay? Same thing on this side. And I'll show you how we'll cut in the side. This goes pretty quickly. So we'll start on this side. I'll put my knife at the apex of that particular shape and make myself a stop cut back towards the back of the hair. Come back up to that top part again for the beard. And then, of course, make that stop cut all the way down towards the foot. I want to be careful as I get towards that foot. There we go. All right, and now we're just going to take uh, some of this material away to bring out the hair and the beard. Now, as far as the depth on this and how much material I'm removing, I would say that I'll take out enough material so that the hair and the beard are probably, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch separated from where the side of the body here is. There's not a lot of depth, but you know, this is a small, small piece, right? There's not a lot of material <laughs> to even work with. But what you want to do, of course, is make sure that your depth on these, the hair and the beard, is symmetrical on both sides. So when you go to cut the one side, just make sure you come back and you, you kind of look at how deep you've gotten. I'm gonna take a little bit more out here in the hair. So yeah just about an eighth of an inch depth. I'm gonna go do the other side now and I'll be quiet so Sonny can speed this up for you. Okay, so we've got good depth on both sides. I like it. Next thing we'll do is come back here and separate the back of the hair from the body. And uh, actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and just make sure we have our stop cut for the hair going up under the brim of the hat here. A little, a little more depth for that than what I had. Yeah, okay. All right, so now we'll cut in the hair on the back of his head. Simple stop cut. And then we'll just cut up to it. And again, probably about an eighth of an inch, I'm going to say, as far as the, the amount of depth and separation between that hairline and the body, okay? Which again, as Sonny's reminding me, thank you very much, Sonny, uh, that eighth of an inch 
folks, is approximately three mils, okay? And I do want to thank uh, some viewers who've, who've kind of mentioned to me, you know, Jack, it would be great if we knew how many millimeters you're talking about. You know, we have that imperial system here in the U.S., and we tend to think of everything in inches. But we know that many of the countries across the globe use the metric system. All righty. Uh, so we've got our hair pretty well cut in, and we've made some pretty good progress. Next thing we'll do is kind of finish getting that nose shaped out. All right. So we put our stop cut all the way around that nose. Now we'll just kind of bring it out a little bit. We're going to cut right underneath there. I'm going to come up here. You'll see there's basically a nice little triangle opportunity where the top of that nose meets the brim of the hat. Just like that. So I've got that blade, bring it right up into that corner. Same thing on this side, right? Put the tip of that blade in there. Come at it this way with the tip of the blade. And then for me, I'll be upside down, bring that blade. What I'm doing here, just so you can see, that tip of the knife, I want to bring it right up into that corner, just like that. And there you go. So very quickly, we can start to get that nose kind of separated from the rest of the material around it. Now you do want to be careful here as you get near the hat brim. It's really easy to break that hat brim. As I mentioned earlier, we're saving that for later because we don't want to have a problem. Uh, on the very first one of these little guys that I carved, I did break the hat brim. And I found myself a piece of wood that was kind of the right shape and size glued it into place and then carved it back into shape and fixed the hat brim. I'll show it to you later. It's not completely uh, <laughs> camouflage. You can see where I did the repair job, but I would say most people wouldn't notice. All right. So just kind of removing material around that nose. What we'll do next is start rounding this beard, kind of rounding it back on both sides. You can see here on this guy, it's still somewhat square, but that beard is rounded, right? That face is somewhat rounded, which again gives us some interest because that hat is not rounded. Okay, so we're just gonna round by starting to remove that corner, working it back a little bit. And while we're doing that, we'll get rid of these bandsaw marks. Just continue to bring it back. Yeah. Same thing on both sides. Just kind of round that back a little bit. We're shaping that face, shaping that beard. All right. Okay, so one of the other things I like to do with these little guys is to give it some contour so that the beard isn't just going straight down. I like to give it a little bit of a 
curvature. And to do that, I'm just going to kind of put my blade in here and curl it a little bit, just like that. Okay, that'll give us a little bit of contour to that beard. You can see already how that's shaped, right? Need a little bit more here. Okay. Now I'm going to bring that beard in just a bit here at the top where it comes close to that hat brim. So you're going to angle that in a little bit. Okay, we'll do that on both sides. There we go. Same thing for the beard at the bottom now. We want to kind of shape how that comes around the feet. And we'll get some of these pencil marks off here too. Okay, so I'm just going to start to angle that beard a little bit here where it comes across the foot. Same thing over here. Just give it a little bit of an angle. Yeah. And then we'll start shaping in these feet. So I'm going to take off. Got top corner of the foot, top corner on this side, and bring the top back a little bit. Get rid of our bandsaw marks while we're here. There we go. And again, just starting to round that a little bit. And rounding from this side. Get ready for bandsaw marks and come across the top of that foot slash shoe to give it some angle. Just like that. There, so you can see that angle. And it's starting to take some shape. It's still a little bit larger than I want it, so I'm just going to trim that down a little bit. Again, bring that beard in along the way. And we'll do the same thing with the other shoe on this side. Take the corners off. Start getting some shape here. Bring the top back. I'm going to angle the uh, top of the shoe here to create a little separation and show where the top of that shoe is. And of course, remove all the bandsaw marks too. Okay, so that doesn't take too long to get our shoes kind of shaped the way we want them to. So the next thing we will do kind of build ourselves some texture. And while I'm here, I'm going to take out some more of this material. It's just kind of hanging out here by the side of that nose so that it's symmetrical on both sides. Okay. 
So as I was talking about, we're going to build ourselves some texture here. And that's all about the hair. And I want to show you a couple of different techniques. And these are going to help you with knife skills. This is important for anyone who's learning to whittle or wood carve. And maybe you don't have a V-tool yet. Maybe you have one. But like I said, it's still a good idea to continue developing those knife skills. It'll take you a long way. You can do a lot of things with just a knife. And I, I do encourage folks to uh, check out some of the folks who whittle a lot, like Gene Messer. Uh, if you look at Gene's channel, you'll see that Gene does just about everything with only a knife. All right, so on this hair, what we'll be doing is kind of a broad V-cut sort of a texture. Okay, I'm just getting under that brim a little bit, clean it up. And that broad V-cut starts with me bringing my knife straight in and giving it a 45 degree angle or so and coming over. Did you see that? I bet you didn't. Here's what you missed. And this is something you'll learn if you watch closely when you're watching carving videos. When I go straight in here, I'm also going forward, okay? I'm pushing that blade forward, I'm slicing. Always remember that your blade is just like a saw, right? You're not just pressing downward. <laughs> you're you're making a motion with it, drawing it backwards, moving it forward, rocking your blade to get that thing to cut. So I'm here. Watch the tip of that knife. Ready? Did you see that? I bet you saw it that time, right? And you come on a 45 degree angle. And again, I'm going to slice. So one of the things that you'll do in building this texture is create some interest. And as I mentioned, we're going to have a different texture on the front where we cut the beard and the mustache. For this hair, we're going to use this broad sort of V-cut. And it creates one look. And the look that we'll get on the other side will be somewhat more, I would say, detailed, I guess would be a word for it. All right, so I think you get the idea here with what I'm doing. I'm going to be quiet for a little bit, and Sonny can sort of speed this up as I go around this hairline. Okay, so we've got that hair textured in there, and you can see, again, we use that broad sort of a V-cut to achieve that. You know, and sometimes you'll have some stubborn pieces um, that don't like to pop out when you want them to. And yeah, you may wind up with a little bit of fuzzies here and there, so you'll, you'll want to go back and do some cleanup. Now... We've got that hair. The next step is to draw that mouth back in on the front. And for that, what you'll do is come down about six millimeters, quarter inch from the bottom of the nose and make your mark. And then for the upper edges of that mouth, we come to where the bottom of that nose is. Make a mark on each side. Just like that. And then we'll just draw in 
the curvature of his smile. There we go. And with that, we're going to put a little bit of a triangle on each end of the mouth, okay? So the edge of that triangle is angled out a little bit, just like that. And now we'll start to begin uh, the mustache. We'll, we'll start carving in some small V cuts for the mustache before we move on to the beard, okay? First thing I want to do though is get a little bit of this area cleaned up here underneath the brim of the hat. I've got some excess material just kind of in my way. So we'll clean that up. Same thing on this side. You know what? The other thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and start to round that nose before I start cutting that mustache in. I'll start by taking off the corners. We're going to wind up with an oval nose. Be careful not to take too much off of the top of that nose where it meets the hat brim. You want to have that area pretty tight like the brim of the hat touches the nose, more or less. All right, I'm just going to bring my blade across the top, sort of bevel that a little bit to get some rounding effect. Move our bandsaw marks. And cut down on the bottom. Okay. And then just continue to round off the surface of that nose. We'll just clean that up a little bit before we start making our mustache. We want to make sure we start on a good foundation. Okay, so with the mustache, we're going to use V-cuts again, but this time we're going to make them a lot more narrow. As far as the angle, it's going to be more acute. It's not going to be like a 45 degree angle when we make those cuts. So we'll start up here next to that nose. We'll just draw a line out this way, just like that. And we'll come back in the other direction this time my angle is going to be very slight, okay, as far as me tilting that blade just a little bit. And this will give us just a sliver of wood that comes out of there. Versus the texturing that we used when we put in the hair. So, so you can see here, I'm going to angle these lines out from the nose for the mustache. And then what you can do here, one of the things with your knife skills, folks, you can choke up a little bit on your blade. And what I mean by that is on your grip, when you're holding that knife, you can actually choke up a little bit with your hand 
to control the tip of that blade. Be careful. Hope you're wearing your gloves. I don't want anyone to get hurt and get themselves cut. So you can see here, we're just putting in a series of V-cuts to create the mustache. I'm just going to come down straight from the top, right under the middle of that nose. So I have a, a little bit of a reference point here. Now, if you feel like doing this with a V tool, you could do it. And yeah, it'll go a lot faster with a V tool. And you may have, let's say, more standardized, more similar types of cuts when you're using a V tool. But this is a great way to continue to develop some knife skills. I'll go ahead and be quiet again for a little bit so Sunny can sort of speed this up. It's going to be somewhat repetitious um, making the same cuts um, on both sides of this face to put in the mustache. It's not, not going to be different than what I've shown you already. So once we've got that mustache where we want it, and it's, uh, it's cut in, the next thing we'll do is put in that mouth. So I'm going to come underneath where that mustache is. I'm going to start with a little stab where that triangle will be on the outside of the mouth over here. Come back on this side. And again, a little stab for the outside of that triangle. Next thing I'll do is kind of go straight in with my blade and follow underneath that mustache to put in that top of the mouth, right? This is where the upper lip would be to connect one side to the other. Now I'm just going to come right in here to that corner. Take out a slice, do the same thing on the other side, come up into that corner. And again, that's more or less a triangle cut. And then with the rest of that mouth, we'll just kind of slice right underneath that stop cut that we made. What I'll do is just give that a little more depth with my blade. Just following that line again to give it more shadow. So I've got a little bit more depth on this side of the mouth than I do over here. So I'm going to fix that. I'll come back over here again. Get a stab cut in there with the tip of that blade. And then bring that tip of the knife up into that corner. Okay, now it's more even. And we'll get rid of the pencil mark. All right, very good. Next, we're going to start carving in this beard. And we'll use some V cuts for that as well. For that, we want to give it a little curvature. 
right? You can see that's sort of a S shape. It's going to create more interest by having some, some contours and some curvature to these hairs. Now again, with these V cuts, It's just angling your blade a little bit. Starting up here, again curving, and coming back at it from the other direction. Be careful about the mouth now. You don't want to go ahead and slice into that. And with these cuts, the, the V cuts are pretty effective and they're also tricky. It doesn't take much to get a little out of control with your cut and wind up taking out a sliver that you didn't want to. So you do have to get some practice in. And the more you do this, folks, the, you know, the easier it'll get for you. Like I said, this is all about building some knife skills. And visually, we're creating some, some interest here by having these different sort of textures, different contours to this piece. All right, I'll just continue to work on this beard. So, we've got that hair sort of blocked in. Now, wherever you see sort of broader areas, like there's, there's a spot here, you know, I'll probably want to just go back in, put a line through the center of that very carefully. Maybe not all the way up, but part of the way, like that. Just want to thin that out a little bit. to make it uh, less of a broad, flat area. That's not the texture that we want for the beard, okay? And this one here is kind of lumpy, I will call it. One thing I'll do is sort of shape it a little bit. And then same thing, kind of come into the center of it, put a cut, and more or less dividing it. And you might find that this takes practice, it does, but you can do it. Just practice, you can do it. So one of the other things we'll do to sort of adjust the look of this is we'll cut in some triangles to take away this straight line along the bottom edge. To do that, I'll just come in here, take a little cut this way, and a little cut this way, and just remove that triangle like that. We'll just go across the back of this guy's hair in that way. Again, creating a little more visual interest. If you like the straight edge look of the hair, you can keep it, right? If that's the way you like it, keep it that way. I want to show you some options. And this is one of the options to sort of break up the look on the back. And you can do the same thing on the sides. 
just by cutting some triangles. Now, did you see that? <laughs> so what happened there? This block of wood slipped in my hand. And when it did, that knife hit my glove right there. And you can see the chunk of wood that came out right here. This is why we wear gloves, folks, for that exact reason. I was just cutting in a small triangle right here. And you can see how that resulted in what could have been a nasty accident. I'll keep this because I'll glue it back in place and fix that. It's pretty simple to do and pretty easy to do. And while I'm at it, let me show you the, the hat brim that I fixed. On this little guy, when I was making him, the hat chunked out on me. Uh, the brim of the hat did. And you can see from the top where the repair is. I put a piece of wood in here and kind of shaped it. So that can happen. Um, and these, these little pieces like this can break on you. Be careful. Be very careful. Anyway, what I was showing you was how you can follow along the edge, even on the sides for this hair, and just take out these little triangles to break up the visual edge of that um, hairline. I can tell you I didn't always wear gloves. I have the scars to prove it. <laughs> but I do recommend them. Um, when I first started, it was 1987, I didn't know about gloves. But I found out the hard way that they are definitely something you need and want to have. All right, just going to put a cut there. And we'll give it another one right here. Okay. So there are some boogers here and there and some fuzzies that I'm going to be cleaning up. I don't think you need to see that, right? What we will do is finish with the rest of this carving. One of the things that we do on these sides and on the back is take these broad, long cuts to get a nice flat look to the surface. This is how we create that visual interest, right? We want to see this flat surface right up next to these textured surfaces. Same thing on the back. And this is kind of an angled cut. And then on this side, a little bit of upside down work. Now the same triangle cuts that we put into the bottom of the hairline, you could do the same thing with this beard along the sides of the beard here if you wanted to. It's your choice. So the final thing we'll do is sort of make this hat. We'll put in the shapes for the hat, and this guy will be done. The first thing I like to do is kind of put in this fold. 
that you see along the bottom. And to do that, we start at the bottom of that brim and we make an angled cut, slice upward like that. Then come straight in. See that? Come over on this side again. Angle that cut up there. And we're going to basically follow that same line all the way around the bottom of this hat. Creating this angle that results in this fold. And it sort of brings out that brim. It, uh, it separates the brim from the rest of his hat. And when you do this, it also gives a visual effect. It enhances that visual effect that the hat sort of drooping downward because now the brim looks like it's drooping downward. Even though we haven't changed where that brim, the bottom of the brim was, we've created an effect above it with this angle. And again, this is kind of a delicate area. You want to be careful with this hat brim. It's going to be a weak area, and it could be something that would break on you. So do be careful when you're working on that brim. And be careful where you put your thumb. You don't want to put your thumb on the brim and snap it off. Just kind of working my way around the outer edge here, cutting in that fold. Yeah, I almost put my thumb on the brim. <laughs> Again, we start at the bottom, sort of angle up with a slice. This just helps us to, again, create some visual interest. Now, on your hat, if you don't want to put in this fold, you don't have to. You know, make it yours. Make that hat brim the way you want to make it. You might want to put a, head, a hat band on there instead. You know, that's certainly an option, too. It's just something that, um, for whatever reason, I have used this same technique on every one of these little guys that I've made. So you can see that brim starting to take shape there, separating from the rest of the hat. So for the next step, uh, step we'll go ahead and work on this side of the hat. Now you can see from this example that he's got this kind of a wedge taken out of his hat on this side. Then we have this long sort of curved contour going up. Another 
curved area on the very top of the hat, and then of course the other side. So we'll start right here by making this wedge cut. Now for this, you know, I didn't really use any particular measurement on here, folks, and you know, do what uh, you think you would like to do. One of the things you will see, though, is the width. You can still bring this in some on the bottom here. So I'm just going to bring that down a little bit more. Again, I want to make these broad, sort of longer cuts, these slices, to create that flat surface that we're looking for. I'm not removing a lot of wood here, right? This is just really thin slices. You can almost see through them. All right. Same thing on the front. Bring this back a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go about right here. I'm going to angle my blade downward towards his nose and come in here on the corner just like that. And I'll slice up to it. Come back here on the back side of his hat. Same thing, at the same height. Make an angled cut downward, and then another slicing up to it. So this is part of the fun with these little hillbillies, is you can, you can get wild and crazy however you want to make these hats, shape them the way you want. In that. Okay, now for the next step, we'll create this contoured side part right here, okay? And to do that, I'm just going to take my knife and use that scoop cut, right? Just kind of curling that blade like that. And then at the top, we're going to bring this in some. So this is that pairing cut that I've showed you before. Right, you're just using your hand. That's it. Keep the thumb out of the way. And bring that top part down some. A little bit more. I want to tell you folks, the uh, last tutorial I did with the uh, little angel was really popular and something that really helped there were the, the folks who hit the like button. Um, not sure what it is about YouTube, but when you hit that like button, it helps to tell YouTube not only that you like it, but that maybe others would like it too and then YouTube will show it to more folks. So I, I do encourage you, if you have a second, to click that like button, that thumbs up for me, and uh, helps share this video with other folks. All right, I'm gonna continue here 
and Sonny is saying, let me see the top of that hat again. See that curvature. So if you look at the top of that hat, there we go. Thank you, Sonny. See how that curves right here? Again, we're looking for some visual interest. So in addition to this contour on the side, we're going to create that curvature at the top. And how do we do that? Well, I'll show you. We're going to start on the edges. You take your knife, come along that edge, and again, this is a paring cup, but we're going to be scooping. We're going to curl that blade across that edge, just like that. Same thing on this edge. Just like that. Then we can get into the center. And again, I'm curling that blade. We're working across some end grain here, which you definitely want to make sure your knife is sharp before you <laughs> start tackling end grain. But you can see very quickly how you can develop that curvature on the top. I still have some bandsaw marks here that I want to take off. Okay, let's go ahead and put in the other side of this hat. You can see it comes down right here and then there's a very long sort of an angled movement up here. So we'll just come from the top here. And again, I'm going to angle my knife downward. Put in a, a little notch here. And then around the same height on the back. And then across the center of that. And now we'll just start removing some material here to angle underneath here. Every once in a while, you probably want to look and see where you're at here and see how you're liking it. I'm going to keep on bringing this in. Compare it to this one. Yeah, I want to bring this down some. And you know, as many of these as you do carve, none of them are going to be exactly the same. And that's the beauty of it, right? They shouldn't be. 
but they will be similar. Now on this particular carving I have you know quite a bit of cleanup that I'll do before it's all done. But I think I've shown you what you'll need to know to go ahead and make one of these for yourself. And I'll tell you something, um, and I have some to show you here, some examples. You can do a bunch of these little itty billies and if you had a civic organization that you belong to or maybe your church is having a, a fundraiser you could carve a whole bunch of these little guys and then donate them to be sold at the fundraiser why not all right so on this top you'll see here it comes to more of a point okay so I'm just gonna bring this in some real quickly to get that effect. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to get uh, a good grip here. I mean, just get my angle right. Yeah, these hillbilly hats, they're fun to make. And as you work on these things, you'll practice your knife skills. I want to show you what you can do. Just for the heck of it, you know, you can carve a whole bunch of these little guys. Like I said. And it doesn't take much to go ahead and change it into a football player. Right? Kind of like a Ryan Fitzpatrick beard on this little guy. And if you really want to get to uh, the point where to challenge yourself, you could use what Donald Mertz has uh, on his website. He's got these Whittle Dwarfs. And, and these little guys are based on the Whittle Dwarf tutorial that, uh, that Donald Mertz provides. What you'll see with the Whittle Dwarfs is that they are even more challenging. And this is knife only. They're challenging because they have noses, right? And ears. Teeny tiny little ears. And those are not easy. But I would encourage you to take a look at Donald Mertz's um, web, website, Woodby Carver, and challenge yourself to do a Whittle Dwarf. Well, I think that we've got this guy uh, where we want it to be today. I want to thank you for joining me, folks. Please hit that like button for me. And I wanted to tell you this all started with the voting poll I took uh, on my community tab on the website on the YouTube channel. The hillbilly had more than 50% of the vote. And so that's why we did this project. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.